Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel called Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified. These videos are based on content from my book of the same name, which is published by Wiley. For more information on the book and these videos, please visit statisticsfromatoz.com. This is the 10th video in a playlist on regression. It is called Design of Experiments, Part 1 of 3. Previously, I had uploaded these other nine videos on regression, two on correlation and covariance, five on regression, one comparing ANOVA to regression, one on residuals, those are the errors in the regression model, and then we'll have three on design of experiments, which is the discipline used to validate regression models. As usual in the book and in these videos, we'll start by going quickly through a list of keys to understanding, or KTUs. This will end up with the overall picture of the concept on a single page. And then we'll go into detailed explanations of each of the keys. For this video, there are only three keys to understanding. The first KTU says, for a process output y, which is a function of several factors, x's, that is for y equals f of x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, design of experiments, DOE, can design the most efficient and effective experiments to determine the values of the x's which produce the optimal value of y. KTU number two says, since designed experiments provide strong evidence of cause and effect, DOE can also be used to validate or to invalidate regression models. Key number three says, statistical software packages perform DOE calculations which help to specify the elements which make up the design. These elements are levels, combinations, replications, run, and order. Key number four says, don't extrapolate. extrapolate. Whatever conclusions we make as a result of the experiment are only valid within the range of levels tested. Key number five says, to start, identify all reasonably plausible factors. And here on one page are all five keys to understanding the part one of the concept of design of experiments. You may wish to pause the video at this point and read them all together. Okay, now let's take a closer look at each of these keys to understanding. KTU number one says, for a process output y, which is a function of several factors, x's, that is, for y equals f of x1, x2, dot, 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 xn, Design of experiments, DOE, can design the most efficient and effective experiments to determine the values of the x's which produce the optimal value of y. DOE can be used to select values for factors, x variables, which produce the optimal value for or the minimum variation in the response, which is the y variable. For examples of factors in a laundry process could be water temperature and type of detergent the response would be a measure of cleanliness. Next, DOE is active in controlling. This can be done with processes, but usually not with populations. Third, DOE doesn't collect or measure data with pre-existing values for Y's and the X's. Instead, DOE specifies combinations of values for inputs, factors. It then measures the resulting values of the outputs, the responses. And this is the design of the experiment. Next, DOE is more efficient and more effective than other methods like trial and error, which is by definition chancy. It rarely gets good results. And testing one factor at a time can require a large number of ex experimental runs. Finally, DOE uses statistics to minimize the number of runs. Also, one factor at a time does not account for interactions between the factors DOE does. Interactions can be very important, and we need to understand them. Testing all possible factors at once can be inefficient and risky. The phase approach of DOE allows for learning and adjusting during the experiment. Now, all this may seem like a lot for us to try to understand, and that is why I wrote 
a three article series in the book on DOE, and it'll take it'll take three videos to explain that. There will be examples. Now, don't worry if you if you stick with this, it will all be made clear. Key to understanding number two says, since designed experiments provide strong evidence of cause and effect, DOE can also be used to validate or invalidate regression models. Designed experiments, which are experiments designed by DOE, are based on careful statistical design and controlled conditions. Designed experiments provide much stronger evidence of cause and effect than inferential statistics. Compared to inferential statistical analyses, Designed experiments are much less susceptible to unknown factors outside the process. The article in the video Regression Part 3 said that we cannot test a regression model with the same data we use to validate. But DOE can be used to, to validate or invalidate regression models. If a regression model is to be a valid model of cause and effect, it must be able to predict future data from controlled experiments. Controlled experiments designed by the discipline of DOE are the way to test this. KTU number three says, statistical software packages perform DOE calculations which help to specify the elements which make up the design. These design elements are levels, combinations, replications, runs, and order. We'll deal with each of these individually, starting with levels. Usually, for practical reasons like cost and time, only two levels of each factor are tested. Let's use a hypothetical example of a laundry experiment. Levels can be high or low numerical values for factors such as temperature or time, or they can represent yes or no answers to questions such as was there a pre-wash cycle, or they can be a choice, for example detergent one or detergent number two. We can use shorthand labels such as negative one and plus one, or just minus and plus, to identify the two levels. For example, for temperature, we could use negative one for 40 degrees Fahrenheit and plus one for 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Later, we'll see that this shorthand has a purpose since we'll be multiplying the negative ones and the plus ones. For numerical levels, it is important to select values which are sufficiently separated to have measurably different effects. Often this means choosing values which are outside the normal operating range, sometimes considerably so. The second element of DOE is combinations. Let's say we have three factors, each of which has two levels. These two levels are labeled plus one and minus one. Then there are two to the third, which equals eight, possible combinations of values with two levels and three factors, which we can test. The first one would be negative one, negative one, negative one. Then there would be negative one plus one, negative one, negative one, negative one plus one, and so on. Every process has some amount of random internal variation, often called noise. If we repeat, that is replicate, a given combination three times, we are likely to get three somewhat different values of the response. This is due to noise, that internal random vari variation. DOE will specify a number of replications, that is repetitions, which will enable this vo noise to be accurately quantified. If we can quantify the noise, then we can separate it from the variation which is caused by varying the values of the factors. Runs and orders are the other two elements of the design. Runs. One run is a single combination tested once, so three replications of one combination would comprise three runs. Order is testing the combinations in a random order. It's very important. The software can provide the order in which the combinations are to be tested. Keto understanding number four says don't extrapolate. Whatever conclusions we make as, as a result of the experiment are only valid within the range of the levels tested. You might remember this little cartoon from the article on regression part three in my book or in the video. 
The person on the left says, our experiments show that three pills produced results which are three times as good as one pill. So 10 pills should be 10 times as good. But the other person warns that 10 pills would send the patient to the hospital. Hopefully this reinforces the concept of don't extrapolate. Whatever conclusions we make as a result of the experiment are only valid within the range of levels tested. In this cartoon, the range tested is one pill to three pills, so we can't make any accurate statement about 10 pills. This is a reason why we should select low and high numerical values, which are widely separated. We should select values which give us a wide enough range for our purposes. The fifth and final key to understanding in this part one video says, to start, identify all reasonably plausible factors. Statistics need not be involved in this. Instead, use subject matter expertise, preferably from brainstorming with several knowledgeable people who have different roles in the process and use subject matter expertise to identify all reasonably plausible factors which might influence the value of the response. Typically, there would be six to eight or more of these. You'll see examples of this in the videos DOE part two and three. Okay, that concludes our video on DOE part one. You may feel a little confusion at this point, and that's understandable, given that this is only part one of a three-part series. So please stick with it. The explanations and examples in the next two videos should help a lot. Here are the others in the playlist on regression. Coming next will be two more videos on DOE. There are also, other vis also videos on the other statistical concepts mentioned in this video. For example, correlation, covariance, regression, ANOVA, and residuals. These videos are available on my YouTube channel, which is Statistics from A to Z, Confusing Concepts Clarified, and more are planned. See statisticsfromazcom slash videos for the latest status of my videos completed and planned. If you liked this video, please remember to press the thumbs up like button on your screen below. I'll be making more videos of some or most of the 60 plus concepts in the book if folks like you tell me more videos are wanted. Please subscribe to this channel to be notified when new videos are uploaded. Also, the website statisticsomatoz.com has a listing of available and planned videos. Now, videos like this one can be very helpful, but they're not very handy when you want to quickly look up something on the job, while studying, or during an open book exam. For that, nothing beats a book or an ebook. You can also learn more about those on the website. You can also take a look at my blog, statisticsomatoz.com slash blog, I'll be posting on the page, Facebook page Statistics from A to Z and on Twitter at, at Stats A to Z.